Hello, hello, my name is Blossoms and welcome to another Genshin Impact video and Lantern Rite is in full swing, which means a lot of you are going to be getting access to your very first version of Gan Yu or Zhongli. And if you're interested in a Zhongli build, we currently just put one up on the channel, so you can go ahead and check that out. Link will be in the description. But as for Gan Yu, we haven't done her build yet, so that's what we're going to be going over today. Now, Ganyu is one of the most hyped DPSs in the game, and for good reason. She is one of the strongest, period, uh, being able to just burst out a ton of damage without really having a cooldown, as her charge shot deals insane amounts of damage, and it only takes as long as it takes to shoot a charge shot to deal, so you can get a lot done. Not to mention, she has a lot of other beneficial things about her that just make her one of the best cryo units and one of the best DPSs overall in the game period so a lot of people are going to be gunning for her so today we're going to be going over some different builds for her things you might want to try out for her yourself in case uh, you don't necessarily have certain artifacts and whatnot as well as different team comps who's going to pair really well with Ganyu and she does have some really good pairings for herself and some other teams that you might want to fit her in that you haven't considered before but we've got a lot to cover of course so let's go ahead and jump into the build all right before we get into the build we need to know a little bit about Ganyu's kit and I did mention before she's one of the top DPSs in the game, but she's also one of the top cryo uh, support units in general. So you can play her in either way. So a lot of you who are dreading the charge attack gameplay, you don't necessarily have to. And if you want a really strong cryo support, Ganyu is going to be one of the best cryo supports, period, uh, for your different cryo teams. So that's just another thing to consider there. I did want to mention that. Uh, but if you are trying to deal damage, most of that is going to be coming from her charge attack damage. And that is because her charge attack has two different levels. Uh, it has the initial level that every uh, archer character has, but it has the second level here. And the second level does two takes of damage, and the first one deals uh, some pretty solid damage. And then the second one does an AOE cryo damage, and the scaling on these is pretty nutty. First one being 205, which is decent, but then the uh, bloom, the second one that actually deals AOE, it's 348% on the scaling there, so it is a ton. So leveling up her normal attack if you're trying to dish out that really good damage is going to be really important. This is why Ganyu is one of the strongest characters is because most of her damage is coming from this charge attack and you can really make this charge attack deal a ton of damage if you build it properly you can get to like 30 50k on a normal hit with the charge attack and uh, if you pair it with like a melt and some other characters you can even start hitting hundreds of thousands of damage just with their charge attack and this doesn't have a cooldown for her damage it only takes as long as it takes to actually do the charge attack and that is one of the things that makes Ganyu so so broken. Other than that though she's basically cryo amber her e skill is a little bit of a taunt here that can deal some aoe cryo damage however the nice thing about this taunt is that it doesn't get kicked or moved around on the field it just stays in one place so they're going to be aggroed to that specifically and that's pretty nice and uh, this will generate some decent energy it's not bad on the energy uh, recharge there for her but you you will need uh, some batteries for her or just to make sure you're funneling into her if you want to get her elemental burst off of cooldown, which is very beneficial considering the fact that her elemental burst here has a 100% uptime potential of being able to keep it going on the field at all times. So energy recharge subsets are extremely valuable on Ganyu because getting her elemental burst off cooldown is awesome because not only does this deal solid damage itself to a very large AoE, it's able to maintain itself for pretty much indefinitely as long as you're getting proper energy and not only that she has a passive that when her elemental burst is going uh it grants 20 percent cryo damage a bonus to active party members in the aoe so you're not only buffing her but you're buffing everybody else while dealing a bunch of damage making those charge shot deals, charge shots deal even more damage than they were already she also has another passive here that uh, basically after firing the Frostflake arrow, the crit rate of subsequent Frostflake arrows and their resulting bloom effects is increased by 20% for five seconds. This is actually very nice because one of the problems that I personally have with Ganyu and some of her best builds have with Ganyu is a little bit of crit rate issues. And this is because one of her best weapons, the Amos bow that's basically tailor made for her, has an attack percentage substat. And although it's an amazing bow, the issue is you're then scrounging for all the crit rate and crit damage substats that you can possibly get. So you need some really solid artifacts to make sure you're getting a good ratio between the two to deal a bunch of damage. And this helps mitigate a lot of that pain point. 
That's basically a brief synopsis of her gameplay and her strengths are, well, she does a ton of damage without really having a cooldown and the fact that she is one of the most consistent cryo appliers in the game. So if you're a big fan of freeze comps, Ganyu is going to be an amazing pickup for you because the AOE on this elemental burst is no joke and she can apply cryo at an incredible rate. It's really good for the freeze comps. One of the most popular teams with Ganyu is actually like a Morgana team comp where you just freeze everybody with her and Mona and you just pop off. But yeah, so not only an amazing DPS, but one of the best cryo appliers, period. So if you don't care for the charge attack at all, which is a big ask for a lot of people, charge attacking can be pretty boring for a lot of people, and I totally get that. Uh, that's why I like to play my Ganyu more as a sub DPS, where she's more focused on the elemental skill and elemental burst, and then occasionally doing a charge attack. Uh, that's my favorite version of Ganyu, but I do play both, and uh, I do find both of them enjoyable. So do not amazing support character, amazing DPS. She's going to fulfill both of those roles fantastically, and she doesn't really have any weaknesses. Looking at artifacts for Ganyu, you actually have a couple of interesting options. One of the main ones here, and the one that I personally run for my DPS Ganyu, is going to be the Wonders Troop set here, because on the two piece, you get 80 Elemental Mastery, which is really nice if you're trying to do a melt comp or something. And then on the four piece there, you're going to increase all your charge attack damage by 35%, uh, which is super awesome for her, because that is going to account for both instances of damage for Ganyu you so it is a very good set for her but it's not the only set you do have some options here namely something like the blizzard strayer is going to be a fantastic option for her because not only are you getting a little bit of cryo damage bonus but then when a character attacks uh, an opponent affected by cryo their crit rate is increased by 20 percent which is really good for her so if you're fighting some other cryo characters you can get that increasing consistency for your gone you and uh honestly this is a set that i really want to mess around with myself i don't have that many good blizzard strayer pieces unfortunately but this there is a concept behind this Blizzard Strayer to where if you're running some sort of freeze comp, you can basically neglect needing any crit rate and just go all in on crit damage. And I do want to test that out as that's pretty fun. You can make her charge attack deal some awesome damage with that. And it's a pretty fun way to play her, but you can just use this in general as well to up your consistency. Or you can use like a split two piece of this and like a two piece of the Gladiator or something. That's also a OK, but you also do have some extra options beyond that. Uh, something like the Shimanawa's Reminiscence is OK. I don't like this one necessarily because I do like using her elemental burst a lot for my playstyle personally, but if you just want to make that charge attack deal as much damage as you can, the Shimanawa's Reminiscence isn't really that bad of an option. Losing that 15 energy can hurt a little bit on Ganyu, but getting the increase in your damage by 50% is pretty incredible however it is only 15 percent more than the wonders troop set so it doesn't feel too too much worth it you do get a little bit of extra attack uh so depending on how you're gonna build her this could be a good set for you but i personally like wonders troop just a little more and i do think maybe a blizzard strayer and a uh, gladiator or like a blizzard strayer and shiminawas is a really good route to go and if you're looking at more support oriented ganyus and four piece blizzard strayer is totally fantastic for her, but also something like the emblem of severed fate isn't bad because it's just going to be increasing your elemental burst damage uh by however much energy uh, recharge you have and it gives you some free energy recharge substats meaning this is going to help you facilitate keeping that elemental burst off a of cooldown and keeping it going for the entirety of the fight which is really cool so if you want a very strong support ganyu this is an excellent set to be using for uh, and uh, although you do lose some a little bit of cryo damage there it's not really that big of a deal because keeping your burst off of cooldown is really nice and although she doesn't need a ton of energy recharge to make that happen this does make it significantly easier and then you could focus more on some other stats and your main stats and substats for it. so the main stats you're going to be running on your ganyu you're going to want to focus on attack percent cryo damage bonus and then crit rate or crit damage as much as you possibly can and if you're going for a more support oriented ganyu you're really going to want to be looking for those energy recharge substats and if you can't just meet the criteria to keep that burst going off of 100 then maybe an energy recharge sands is going to be a pretty decent option for you uh, I would try to stay on the attack percentage as much as possible, but if you really like the concept of keeping that elemental burst uh, up indefinitely, then an energy recharge sands can also work for you. But attack percent is just going to be strictly better for whatever build you're going to be doing, and you're going to need that cryo damage bonus as well. And uh, query and crit damage, of course, is just going to be helping you deal as much damage as possible. Of course, substats you're going to want to be looking for are crit rate and crit damage and energy recharge are going to be your top priorities. Uh, other things like uh, elemental mastery or attack percent are just kind of bonuses but you don't really need them at all crit rate crit damage energy recharge are the top top priorities for substats on your Ganyu. 
And before we go into the weapons, I'll briefly go over each and every one of my artifacts so you know what we'll be using for this video. All right, talking about weapons for Ganyu, Amos Bow is going to be one of the best picks possible as uh, Amos Bow has a big base attack, big uh, attack percent subset, so it's a huge stat stick. And not only that, it increases your normal and charge attack damage. And then also after firing normal or charge attack, uh, it, the damage is increased further by 8% at uh, R1, 10% uh, at R2. I have R2 here, if you haven't noticed. Every 0.1 seconds, the arrow is in the air for up to five times. And the craziest thing about this is that the second part of the pass passive here continues to go on while you're waiting for the second part of her charge attack to happen. So when the first hit actually hits an opponent, this modifier here on the passive of Amos bow is still ticking for the second hit. So it's very easy to max out that damage for your gone you to be able to get the maximum uh, damage bonus on the Amos bow here. So that's why it's so amazing on her. And then also just giving you free normal and charge attack damage is really strong. But of course, other five stars are fantastic for it. And something like Skyward Harp is going to work well, gives you free crit rate and crit damage, helps you out a ton there. And then, of course, uh, something like um, the Thundering Pulse is good. Crit damage substat gives you a little bit of attack. Not as good because it only increases your normal attacks instead of increasing like normal and charge attack. And then Polar Star is pretty interesting because then you can run a main DPS gone you where you get the free crit rate from it. But then you're also getting an increase in your elemental skill and elemental burst damage while getting some attack percentage. And I think the Polar Star is a very interesting option for it. So if you have it, then I think that's going to be really solid. And of course, if you're building a support on you, something like Elegy at the end is going to be entirely viable because this uh, can allow you to get the passive pretty easily, get some elemental mastery going. So if you're putting her in some sort of like reaction comp as a cryo support, then this is going to be a really cool option for her. And it gives her a good chunk of energy recharge. It's going to allow her to have that elemental burst off of cooldown and I actually plan on doing a build with Elegy at the end on Ganyu for an infinite elemental burst cooldown. So if you want to see that, let me know in the comment section below as I'm very to get that build out and uh if if you guys want it sooner than later then i'll focus more resources on it but other than that those pretty much all the five stars are going to be really good on her and you can find a way to make them work uh amos bow just being the best because the second part of the passive is just so good but other ones aren't bad options at all but of course, most of us don't have five stars. So what four stars are good on Ganyu? Well, namely things like Hama Yumi are going to be good because it increases your charge attack damage as well. And you can have that stack if you have your elemental burst and you don't use it. But I don't really recommend that. But regardless, just the increase in charge attack damage is still pretty good. Of course, things like the Viridescent Hunt or the Black Cliff Bow are going to be decent because you get crit rate and crit damage. Uh, but also something like Prototype Crescent is something you shouldn't sleep on. You get attack percentage similar to Amos Bow. And then when you do a charge attack, it increases your movement speed and your attack by a significant chunk here. So uh, the more refinements you get here, the higher attack you're going to be uh, giving yourself, which is very nice and basically makes it like a pseudo Amos Bow because you're getting so much attack, which is pretty cool. Uh, but it just doesn't have nearly the same base attack, but it's still a very, very good option. However, if you wanted my favorite four star pick, I think the Viridescent hunt is my favorite personally because it gives you some nice crit rate subsets helping your consistency and then not only that it allows you to keep opponents in one area allowing her aoe to hit as many opponents as possible and i really like that aspect to it uh, but of course i think the prototype crescent is also very very good on her as the sheer amount of attack you can get from it is very nice and you get some extra movement speed. So I think those are my two favorite four stars. And if you're going for a support on you, uh, something like the Stringless is going to be good just for the extra damage there or something like Favonius Warbo if you're trying to have her battery somebody. One more weapon I wanted to mention was actually the Slingshot because it has a crit rate substat and then the passive here seems like it'd be good on Ganyu, but I don't actually know if this affects Ganyu's charge attack or not. Because in theory here, if a normal charge attack hits an opponent within uh, 0.3 seconds of being fired, it increases the damage by 60%. So in theory, you could make it to where she deals some extra damage. However, I think this being 0.3 seconds is a little bit too short for her second uh, uh, part of her charge attack to actually take advantage of it. So even if you got the first part to take advantage of this, I don't think the second part would because I think it takes longer than this. Uh, so 
I did want to mention that I haven't entirely checked that myself. If somebody knows, let me know in the comment section below. Uh, that'd be a great help for everybody, but I'm pretty sure that's how it works. And I just wanted to mention that in case any of you were thinking about it. All right, and before we move on to some different pairings and team comps, you might want to try with your Ganyu. We're going to take a look at my Ganyu stats. I have about 2000 attack here, uh, 96 elemental mastery. And then our crit rate and crit damage is about 54% on the crit rate and 170% crit damage. Do note that her uh, ascension passive is crit damage there, so you can get some free crit damage just by ascending her. That's why I have her at 80 out of 90 ascended because, well, one, I do plan to actually actually get some of our talents up more than they already are, but also because it gave me some free crit damage. I only have my energy recharge at 125. I'd ideally like this to be our, at around at least 140. So we are lacking a little bit there. And then the cryo damage bonus here is about 46%, which gets increased to 60.6% whenever we're actually in her elemental burst. And uh, just another note here, I do want to have a little bit more crit rate, but 54% isn't really all that bad. Considering the passive there is going to be helping out uh, our crit rate a bunch, making it around 70% so that's a big help but I would still like mine to be a little bit higher personally and then of course the talent levels here are 8, 6, and 6. You are going to want to be leveling up her normal attack as much as humanly possible if you're trying to make her deal as much damage as possible and then I'd say Celestial Shower is your next priority and then you can uh, you know just work on the E skill whether you want to or not. I I'd say stopping at level 6 is fine you can get it to 8 if you want but it's really not that big of a deal. Alright, so I got a couple team comps to show you off to you guys here. And starting off, we have a uh, freeze comp here for you guys. And this one's a uh, Ganyu, Kokumi, Kazuha, and Rosaria. And I do want to note Rosaria is very replaceable here. Uh, if you have like an Ayaka here that you could put alongside Ganyu for a freeze comp, you can really pop off with that team. It is an extremely strong freeze comp. But in fact, a lot of these uh, teammates are actually fairly replaceable. Kazuha could easily be replaced with somebody like Sucrose. Kokumi could be replaced with somebody like Mona. And in that case, with uh, if you replace Kokomi with Mona, then you're probably going to need to replace your second cryo unit uh, with somebody like Diona just to make sure you're having those heals. So you just got to balance it out however you'd like and how for whatever units you actually have. And it's probably going to operate pretty darn well. Uh, so there's a lot of mix and matching you can do with this one. Next up is a sort of milk comp for Ganyu, and this one's mostly focused around having Ganyu, Bennett, and Zhongling. And Zhongli here is actually very replaceable for the party. I like having a character like Zhongli or really any shielder for this spot just because having a shielder for Ganyu can be so important because uh, while you're doing that charge attack, you're pretty vulnerable. So as long as you can tank some hits, uh, that's going to be really valuable for your Ganyu because that way you're going to be able to get off your charge shot, not lose the damage and not take damage at the same time. So having a shielder is very valuable, but this is also easily replaceable with something like Kazuha or Sukra somebody that can swirl up any of these elements and then uh, Bennett's going to be buffing of course Shangling and Ganyu and uh, Shangling is likely going to be the one melting most of the time off of Ganyu's elemental burst that'll constantly be applying cryo but every now and then you're definitely going to be getting some melt procs off of your Ganyu charge attack as well so it's a pretty win-win because both of them hit really hard uh, so while you are in your Bennett circle you can cast the Shangling elemental burst cast the Ganyu elemental burst and then just do your charge shot for a while until uh, Shangling's burst is over and dish out a ton ton of damage during that period of time. Of course, another little variant of that, you could easily just add another Geo unit, realistically any other Geo unit. Somebody like Noel would be fine to be a healer for a team. And then you could just try to get your melts going on with Shangling and Ganyu and then take advantage of the Geo resonance bonus while having stronger shields. So that's also definitely an option. So if you want to charge attack and not take damage, having a double Geo might be a pretty solid option for you. Those are just a couple of team concepts for Gan Yu. She does pair well with a lot of characters. Uh, pretty much any slot you'd like a cryo character in your team, she can fulfill for the most part, other than, of course, healing or something. But if you need someone to be applying some high she's an excellent option for that. Uh, she does lack in some pairings, though. Other characters that want you to normal attack, she doesn't pair super well with because, of course, you have to normal attack and they're not going to proc off of her charge attack or something. So that's something to make note of. So like Xing Shou, even though he's usually great for a lot of freeze comps, he doesn't pair super well with Ganyu just because you're typically not normal attacking with her. You can fit those in there if you'd like. Uh, but typically you're just charge attacking, so you would have to play around having characters like that. And that's just something I wanted to note. They're not necessarily bad. They just require a little bit of paying attention more than the other characters. Also, having the dual cryo resonance can be really valuable for her because you do get that extra increase in your crit rate to make her just that much more consistent. And then if you pair her with another character like Rosaria or something, that's extra good because Rosaria has a passive that gives you a little bit more crit rate whenever you cast her elemental burst as well. 
So you can have a freeze comp with two cryo characters where you're not only getting some extra crit rate uh, from the passive, but then you're also getting extra crit rate from your elemental resonance. And you can kind of double stack on that, make your Ganyu as consistent as you can and pair whoever you want with them. And I think that's very cool. All right, and is it really a build video if you don't bully some flowers? So we'll go ahead and get the shield down. We'll use Bennett and Zhongli the works along with Ganyu's burst just to see uh, what you can kind of expect from her charge attack and how much damage it's really dealing total. Let's go ahead and get this guy down. Then we'll go ahead and uh, get Bennett going. Get Zhongli going. Get her burst going. Then show you guys what a charge attack looks like. And uh, I somehow missed apparently. But 21k and about 40k there is uh, about what you can expect there. So yeah, you can really get it to do some dummy damage, but let's see how she works in uh, one of those team comps that I showed earlier. All right, and we're in the Ocean Hue Clam Domain here, and I wanted to show off the freeze comp that I mentioned earlier just so you guys can see it in action. And uh, this is a pretty solid spot with some ads so you can see how it affects them and how you can really control the battlefield with a Ganyu comp like this. So as you can see, uh, we basically were able to dodge them for the most part very easily. I think Rosaria got hit there once, but because they're frozen half the time, you can kind of see when they're winding up their attacks and generally dodge them while also just basically able to not get hit at all because they're frozen in the first place. So it's a very good team comp and it can dish out some really solid damage. All right, so that's going to be about it for the video. Hopefully it helped you guys build your Ganyu how you'd like to and showed you guys some different team comps you might be able to use her with. Uh, let me know how you're building your Ganyu in the uh, comment section below as I'd love to see that. But other than that, I hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. My name is Blossoms and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.